Thank you, as always, Santa Barbara, for continuing to watch Nonprofit Spotlight. We're at Lotus Land, and today we'll be talking with curator Virginia Hayes and executive director Carolyn Stoffer. Let's start our tour. Virginia, Lotus Land is one of Santa Barbara's favorite destinations. Mm -hmm. Can you start off by telling us a brief history of this wonderful gem? Sure. I think a lot of people don't really know that um, it's been here as a property developed for a really long time. The first owner of the property, developer of the property, was Kenton Stevens, and he bought it in 1883. Okay. And he started a farm and a nursery here. And so many of the biggest, oldest plants that um, we still have on the property are from his time. So his legacy is still here. And then later, uh, the more formal parts of the garden, the buildings that were built in the 20s, um, 1920s, came with the family named Gavitz. They had a more um, highbrow sort of <laughs> look at things. And so they have these beautiful um, designed formal gardens with ponds and fountains and uh, things like that. So we have them to thank for that part of the property. And then when Madame Walska came to California, she fell in love with the ability to grow almost anything. She was a collector of many sorts of things. So she built a plant collection wow. of many, many rare and exotic plants um, that we are left to care for today. She was here over 40 years. So hers is, of course, the longest and richest um, building of the plant collections. It's interesting to find out that it has such a long legacy and, and it has gone through all of these different eras. Right, yeah, you can stand in any one place in the property almost and see some piece of each of those pieces of history. Well, can you share with us how Lotus Land went from a private residence to a public garden? Mm -hmm, sure. Madame Walska had great foresight. She knew she was building something very special here. She wanted to open it to the public, the horticultural public as well as the general public. And as early as 1966, she was figuring out how to leave this in a nonprofit status so that it could be open later to the um, general public under a foundation. And it took several years um, going through the county permitting process before we were able to open to the public. So officially we opened in fall of 1993, although we were allowed a few smaller groups before that. You know, we've learned so much about Lotus Land already. If people haven't already been here, I'm certain they're going to want to come. Mm -hmm. Tell us about how uh, someone visits Lotus Land. Okay. We, because of our um, permit to operate under the county, are restricted to 15,000 visitors per year. Okay. We operate from mid-February to mid-November, Wednesday through Saturday. But everyone must have a reservation to come to the garden. So you call our office, you pick a date, you um, choose a morning or an afternoon tour and you sign up. Sounds easy. And in addition to the 15,000 visitors that can come um, through the reservation department, we have uh, are allowed 5,000 extra um, visitors K through 12 students. So they learn photosynthesis and all these interesting terms about plants and then they come and see how that is played out in the garden. So they become junior botanists mm -hmm. um, after they've had a visit to Lotus Land. And one of the other key points of this program is that we have uh, tailored the program to fit the California State Life Sciences curriculum so that the teachers can use all of this material um, in their um, curriculum. Well, Gwen, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Why don't you tell me about the mission? We've, you know, we were told about how Lotus Land transitioned from a private residence to a public garden, a nonprofit. So what is the mission of Lotus Land? Well, I think it was very much Madam's desire to share this place in perpetuity to all future generations, but also to come to understand and appreciate plants. And so our collections are very serious. And, and we've got um, important conservation work we're doing here and of course important education that we're doing especially with children and that's very very true to the mission and the legacy of Madam. One of our biggest myths that we deal with is that you can't get into Lotus Land at all and if you want to come you have to make a reservation a year in advance and it's just not true. 
Now at a time it was, mm -hmm. when Lotus Land first opened up in 1993 after finally acquiring their first conditional use permit, only 5,000 people were allowed. But we are now at, at 15,000, that is our limit, and although we'd love to have more people than that, that's how we operate. And we still are required to do the reservation system, but you could pick up the phone today and come tomorrow. You could pick up the phone one morning and still make it in the afternoon. There's often slots, and it, it depends on the time of year, the season. Sometimes we're busier than others. People love getting here for the Lotus, and so if you want to see the Lotus in July and August, I'd say try to make it in advance. But it isn't as difficult as most people think. And we really value our members, and there are wonderful benefits if you become a member. Uh, I think the best benefit mm -hmm. is you can walk around the garden on your own. If you are not a member, you have to go on a tour and you're led by a docent. And that's still a really great experience. Definitely. And anyone who comes to Lotus Land for the first time, you'll, you'll really enjoy the tours. Our docents are marvelous. But if you're a member, you can guide yourself through the garden and you can enjoy whatever section of the garden that you want the most. So it's a prime benefit and it's a great reason to join. We've got an incredible staff here, and uh, I want to share with you one of the things that they're doing, which is cutting edge and ha is not happening in any public garden that we know of uh, in the country, and that is our sustainable horticulture program. We do everything biodynamically, beyond oh, wow. organic. We have no chemical inputs, no chemical uh, fertilizers or pesticides of any sort. Everything is done organically. And we've been doing this for 16 years. What a great so, model. Fabulous model. And we have been helping the county and the city of Santa Barbara find ways to make all of their green spaces more green and more sustainable. I want to let our viewers know how they can come and visit Lotus Land because to be honest, you're missing out if you haven't <laughs> been here. This place is absolutely inspiring. You're doing great work when it Thanks. comes to the sustainable horticulture. Uh, let our viewers know how to contact you and uh, your website information. Sure, absolutely. So if you want to come to Lotus Land, call us at 969-9990. Easy, easy number to remember. Easy enough. And we are at www.lotusland.org. Well, thank you, Gwen, for showing us around. Your, you and your staff are, are absolutely fantastic. Thank you. You're watching Nonprofit Spotlight. For more information on the Nonprofit Spotlight, check our website at www.spchannels.tv.